We spent uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in Montreal. And tonight, we are here in Burlington, Vermont, at the Flynn. So when we get done the show tonight, we're going to pack it all up and take it to the Proctor in Schenectady. everybody and welcome to the Flynn Theater. I'm Andrea Rogers, Executive Director of the Flynn. For the next few minutes, we're going to give you a look at a day and a year in the life of the Flynn Theater. You'll see some backstage action, you'll learn a little history, and you'll see how we fit into the larger community. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Our work day usually starts about 7 o'clock. First truck in is the lighting. Obviously, we need everything overhead done prior to the erection of the set and the scenic components. Heads up on the deck. Somebody's got to move that lighting rack, please. It's a beautiful house. The staff is very organized and well run, so we're very aware of what's happening coming in. The Flynn is basically the only real theater venue we have in town. We have other places where events are staged, but they don't have the sense of history that the Flynn does. Mr. Flynn, who was a fine businessman and a person who was very thoughtful of the community, decided to build the Flynn Theater here. The theater was handsomely decorated, just made beautifully. And it's understandable that it would be that way because that was the kind of a person Mr. Flynn was. He did things right and he had a big heart. It was built at a very, very important time in, in theater development and we're lucky to have it. Up on the high steel in this building are dates from the steel riggers with their names and the dates checked off as they were counting the days down to meet their construction deadline. At the time the Flynn opened, we had trolley service all over Burlington, and they took one of the last trolley cars, parked it right out here in front of the Flynn Theater, and set it on fire, and we, the whole town gathered around to watch the thing go up in flames so that we could then go over to buses. But the Flynn Theater was part of that time of history. It was very much a community center. It was where people came to hear the news, to see the news. They sold war bonds in the theater. It had a very interesting history during the 40s. So it was a very good theater for children, for communities, and for dates. When I ask patrons, where did you come to on a date? It was always the Flynn, because it was the fanciest, they had the nicest concession counter, and it was always the cleanest. In the 50s and 60s, continued to be a, a movie theater. In the 70s, it was purchased by Merrill Jarvis. Um, he began to let the community come in and use the theater for live performance, and that was really the beginning of, of the idea that Lyric had, really, to turn this into a live performance hall. Lyric Theater is a group of Burlington area people that uh, are dedicated to putting on musical comedy. Lyric Theater has always made the Flynn their home. They certainly were our parent organization, and we have a very close relationship with them. They perform two major seasons here, or two major productions. Being in the Flynn is just a, a wonderful opportunity for us. It gives us what we call a big stage and a big house where we can do the kinds of things that you have to do to put on a major musical comedy. And that requires a lot of equipment and capabilities that fortunately the Flynn is able to provide. All the light gets hung, all the scenic components are built. Uh, from there, wardrobe, props. After that, we would approach it from a sound aspect. And then it would be setting light levels. The lighting designer and the stage manager worked together to set the look for this particular theater. 
We're really dedicated to outreach projects and interactive projects with artists that involve kids and local artists and, and classes and things like that so that we can really touch people's lives. Bringing students to the Flynn Theater for performances, uh, putting together workshops in association with the Flynn Theater of artists such as Max Roach, who is a cornerstone in a very important art form such as jazz. Now what I'm doing, I'm listening to myself so I get a balanced sound. The opportunity so for these children is a chance of a lifetime. If the artist is interested, the Flynn is interested, and they go way out of their way to put these type of things together. Wheeler and Flynn um, have formed a partnership that enables all of the students at Wheeler, not just the ones that are on the stage, but all of them, to be immersed in the performing arts. Basically, without these programs being brought into our school, our kids wouldn't be that interested in the performing arts. I think that you can see the difference in the children and how they feel about themselves. It's a tremendous self-esteem booster. We feel we're building the next generation of performing arts attendees and of people who are knowledgeable, interested, and very excited about the performing arts. I don't know too many kids in the school that are afraid to get up on that stage anymore. They love it. They, they crave it. David Dorfman, who's a, an important emerging choreographer, came to plan this large-scale project. We got the word out for him that there's a new work going to be developed for athletes. And he came in and picked 25 performers, athletes, out of this group of 65. The dedication and the enthusiasm has been great. I think that's been set up originally by the atmosphere that the Flynn created. It was sort of wild pandemonium, but a wonderful large-scale dance event. They want to broaden the audience and bring art to people that might not get to the Flynn. The children who are at Wheeler um, feel it's their theater. They are like a cornucopia for the community. We're really excited about our plans for the future. We'll have additional spaces for education, and uh, we'll do workshops and hopefully even provide small theater space for other organizations. I have seen it work in other communities where you have a dance class going at the front of the building, you have a, uh, a lecture going down below, you have a credit course from the university in another part of the building, and in the meantime, you've got a show going on stage. We can essentially create a downtown arts campus. The actors, they usually wait around until all the voicing is done, the cueing is done, and they walk on just to block the place, to get a feel for it. And then they'll disappear. All right. <laughs> Zero channel, 10 and full. Roughly right there, right? That's good. Vermont Symphony has been playing here, I guess, for about 11 years, and this is our home base. The place we consider home as much as we can consider a place home because we travel around quite a bit. There's so much great uh, performance art that comes here, and it's nice to be on the same stage with all that other art. And I, I think it's uh, the Art Deco is really unique. You know, I mean, I've been around the country a lot and seen very little that kind of approach that in terms of uh, scale and beauty. The acoustics here are great. Uh, it's known as the live hall, but it's not too live, uh, and it feels it feels like a good place to play. The Jazz Festival really epitomizes collaboration because it's a public-private partnership. It's the city, it's the Flynn Theater, it's Pepsi-Cola Bottling Company, 150 to 200 other local businesses all supporting the festival, and it's 400 volunteers. Jazz literally takes over the town. We have concerts at the Flynn, at the Contois Auditorium, on the ferries, in the prisons, on the buses, and the street corners, and we bring artists from all over the world to perform here. Youth Orchestra makes us their home. We're also um, a very important site for the Berkshire Ballet. And then we're a home for a number of other annual events. First night alone, they have up to eight performances here at the theater. They're usually all sold out. So if you do your calculations, you'll know that we have 12 to 14,000 people come through this theater in one night. This is really what a downtown is supposed to be all about. I, I'm just so impressed and so happy with what the Flynn has done for Chittenden County. 
everything that it's brought to this area and uh, also the economic impact that it's had. I'm sure a lot of people that uh, are here this evening have been out to local restaurants having dinner, so it really does help the downtown area. This is my first pork tour, so first bus and truck tour. Different city every day. I love this city. It is. It's a fine At IBM, we're very pleased that our sponsorship is able to benefit both the Flynn Theater and the Lane Series. Uh, here with the orchestra and the, and the crowd and the excitement, it's wonderful. That was one-on-one -on -one at Seoul, right? That we could have a performance on this scale and have it happen in Burlington, I think it's very important for both organizations. The Flint is setting the pace regionally and sometimes nationally for um, new approaches to presenting the performing arts and involving a community in dance, music, and theater. Great thing for a cold night. It was rude. I think it was really hot and the crowd was so appreciative. I've talked to touring companies that say they've heard about this wonderful little theater in the state of Vermont by a lake with a great downtown, with great people and a great audience, and they want to come back. It's much more than just theater. It's a community resource that happens to be a theater. Our culture is what we leave to the next generation. And I think a Flynn is a very big part of the culture of Burlington. I just get this tremendous sense of warmth and pride, really, um, that we can have this in Burlington and that so many people can go away from this place having been touched by a wonderful performance. And it lives with them. It lives with them for a long time, sometimes a lifetime.